Welcome back to Community Cat News. I'm Fiona Fluffyface. Over the last two weeks, we've been getting calls from cats reporting very strange experiences in the neighborhood. Each story starts with a delicious meal outdoors and ends in what some cats describe as alien abduction. Most of the cats were not willing to be interviewed on the record. As you can imagine, this is a sensitive subject matter. But we were able to get one cat to sit down for an exclusive interview with Tom Whiskerson. What you are about to hear may be disturbing for some listeners. Mr. Dorito, I understand you've been through quite the ordeal. How long ago did this happen? Your, uh, experience. First, Tom, let's call it what it is. I was abducted. No two ways about it. I was taken by a being from another world. They took me to their spaceship, conducted medical experimentation on me, and brought me back. Let's go back to the beginning. Where and when does your story start? I can tell you exactly. It was two weeks ago, Monday night, just after six o'clock. There's a little hole in the wall spot that I've been eating at for years. I don't want to say exactly where because then every cat in the tri-state area will try to show up and squeeze in on my beautiful spot. And I won't be able to get there anymore. But there's... There's a little wooded area behind this lovely lady's house. That's where she throws out her leftovers, because she's kind. And I never miss out on a Monday night, because that's rotisserie chicken night. The most tender bird you've ever tasted falls right off the bone. You see why I don't want to give up my location, Tom. Hmm, I can practically taste it now. So, it's Monday night and you arrive at your spot behind the woman's house. What happens next? See, this is where I can tell you something's different. The bird has always just been out in the open, laying on the ground. But this time, there was a private dining area. Oh, it was just big enough for one cat. The walls and low ceilings were just beautiful. And there was a towel draped over the top for privacy. And I thought... Oh, wow. This is nice. She made some upgrades. So I walk right in, and there... There's the bird. And I just go to town. I absolutely stuff myself. Of course, I had no idea what was about to happen. Or I never, ever would have went in there. And what happens next? I turned around to leave, and... There was just this wall, just appeared there, blocked my way out. You mean you were trapped? That's exactly what I was. Trapped. I studied every inch of this room, but there was no way out. I spent all night in there, Tom, so I had plenty of time to look at this, well, this cage. It was not a room. It's a cage, and I can tell you, it's not human-made. What makes you say that? A human could never design something like this. You've seen those fences they put around their houses, right? <laughs> those flimsy things? They can barely keep out dogs. Heck, half the time even the dogs find a way to tunnel under the fence. <laughs> or jump over. Exactly. My point being that this cage was way too advanced to be human technology. There were no weak points. No way to get out. So, you were stuck in there all night. Then what? I mean, at some point, I must have fallen asleep. Because I woke up, and this cage was floating. Like I said, there was a towel over it, so I couldn't see out the top of the sides, but... I looked down, and I would guess I was hovering a few feet above the ground at least. And how did you react? Did you yowl, hiss? No. I was too scared. I went mute. The cage was floating and moving away from the woods. Then after a few minutes, the cage came down and landed. I couldn't see anything, but I could tell. I could sense. I was in their spaceship. I could feel the vibrations. I knew they were taking me somewhere. 
I got the sense we were traveling at a great speed, probably to escape Earth's atmosphere. After a while, the vibration stopped, and I started floating again. When I landed, I could tell I was inside. How did you know you were inside? Well, I'm an outside cat. I was born outside. I've lived my whole life outside. And I know what outside smells like. This did not smell like outside. Didn't sound like outside, neither. I could hear these noises. It sounded like... Beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, beep. And you were alone in there. Oh, no. I could smell other cats. And I could tell they were just as scared as I was. I could hear some of them hissing, growling, and making these noises. My cage floated up, landed on a table... That's when I saw the alien. It pulled the towel off my cage. So now, I could see everything. I could tell I was in the laboratory. Could you describe the alien? Its basic shape was like a human, and it had human clothes on, but... It was not human. Its hands were blue. I mean... Have you ever seen a human with blue hands? I have not. Its head was really weird looking. It had eyes, but no nose or mouth. The top of its head was blue and puffy, and its face, where, where the nose and mouth should have been, there was blue there too. And this is the last thing I remember. This being, this alien, it had no mouth, but I heard it say to me, it's time to go to sleep now. And I felt this little sting in my rear end, and that's when everything faded to black. So this alien had no mouth, but spoke to you. How do you explain that? I think, I think it's entirely possible that these beings have evolved to the point where they just send their thoughts to each other. They don't even need mouths anymore. So, you lost consciousness? I have no idea how long I was out for, and I think the aliens scrambled my memory a little because... I just have these little bits and pieces, like, I remember the alien said, it's time to wake up, and I felt this wind hitting my nostrils. I was so sleepy, and then it all went black again. I think I was wrapped in a towel at one point. I don't, I don't know. I remember being back in the cage, and everything started to smell real familiar again. I could tell they were bringing me back, then the cage opened, and I ran. I ran like I never ran in my entire life. I ran straight to my barn. My buddy Bukes was there, and he said, Man, what happened to you? You smell weird, and the top of your ear is gone. I reach up with my paw, and he's right. The alien took part of my freaking ear. What do you think they wanted with your ear? This whole thing is so bizarre. Why just part of my ear? Did they just take a nibble? And didn't like how I tasted? So they put me back? I, I don't know. We've heard from a dozen cats in the last few weeks with a similar story and this part is always the same. They wake up and part of their ear is gone. Have you felt any different in other ways since you were returned? It's the weirdest thing, but yes. I do feel different. I feel calmer. Before my abduction, I'd see cats in my territory, and I'd want to slap them in the next Tuesday, you know? Pow! Get out of here! But now, I feel like, hey, this yard's big enough for the two of us. He's not hurting anything. Actually, I just met a cat a few days ago. His ear was cut like mine, and he's got me into classic literature. We started a book club. 
we're reading The Sun Also Rises by Hemingway. I understand you've also become a poet since your return. Oh, I don't know about poet, but I dabble. Would you share a poem with our listeners? Let me see. I think I have a haiku in me. <clears throat> Savory chicken. Has anyone seen my ear? Free meal was not free. That... that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing your harrowing experience. Fiona, back to you in the studio. We would like to extend thanks to Mr. Dorito for sharing his experience with us. For any cats interested, his book club meets behind the barn on Tuesdays. We would also like to thank Meow Meow Puppytail, feline rights attorney, for sponsoring this episode of Community Cat News. Meow Meow Puppytail, feline rights attorney here. Have you woken up in the middle of the night, grabbed your ear and realized the tip is missing? Do you have vivid memories of traveling in some sort of craft at a million miles an hour? If so, you may be eligible to join a class action lawsuit. I won't stop until the humans or whatever entity pays you what you're owed. They stole from you. It's time to get it back. Call now to join the class action lawsuit. 555-555-555. Or just lay on the phone. He's your human, make him pay. And if he's your alien, we'll make him pay too. I'm Meow Meow Puffy Tail, and I'm ready to believe you. <laughs> Yo, hair butts and slow blinks, good people. It's your boy Sterling, Trap King Davis. I go by Trap King because of my organization that I started out of Atlanta, Georgia, focusing on TNR and community cat care. Now, what TNR is, is trap, neuter, and return. So while your boy Dorito was thinking he was being abducted, actually it's a process where cats are caught in humane traps. They're taken to low-cost spay and neuter vaccination clinics where they're spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and returned back to their colonies. This prevents overpopulation and spread disease. So no, Mr. Dorito, you were not abducted. You went through a process that me and my kitties Alanis Muisette and Demita Joe travel all around the country in in our RV educating, promoting, and assisting in this. So when you get a chance, please check me out. Um, TrapKingHumane.org. Also, you can follow me and my crazy adventures with my girls on Instagram at the underscore original underscore trap king. Come holla at me. Remember, you don't lose cool points for compassion. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>